A warm welcome to our dismissals assembly, which marks the end of this term. For those students who are new to the school and are perhaps still absorbing some of our traditions, these assemblies provide us with an opportunity to come together and celebrate your success. We take them seriously, so check your uniforms as they should be, sit up straight and join us as we look back on the term now ending. Our values, generosity of spirit, creativity in all our endeavours and celebrating of success in all its forms are central to our school community. They are the principles that guide us, ensuring that we do the right thing, even when no one is looking. In one short assembly, it's not possible to celebrate you all, but students and staff, Please put your hands together at the appropriate time to recognise the following students who we feel have embodied the values of county so well this term. So for demonstrating a generosity of spirit, please join me in celebrating Heidi Lee Victoria, Benji Slyfield, Megan Flemings, Melissa Strudwick, Oscar Drage, Theo Glynn, Ellie Cook, Heidi Jobson, George Neal, Harry Briggs, Tom Robinson, and Jenny Virgo. And now for students who have showed a creativity in their endeavours. John Luke Hughes, Jamie Van Eikenhoff, Owen Sellen, Daniel O'Leary, Luca Woodruff, Sophia Caller, Eleanor Daniels, Emily Hawthorne, Sienna Castles, Layla Davis, Matilda Billinge, and Sophia Bailey. And finally, those students whose success we would like to celebrate. Sophia Sperande, Harvey Taylor, Max Passingham, David Garner, Neve Howson, Lily Brown, Amber Neal, Owen Rygate, Preston Toombs, Adam Crocker, Harry Redhead, and Beth. Holloway. The limitations of an event like this means that we can only ever celebrate the achievements of a fraction of students. For this we apologise. We would hope though that over the Easter holidays you all take the time to reflect on the successes that you have all had this term. Have a wonderful break. So, lockdown two or was it lockdown three? Either way, we were ready this time. Teachers were tooled up with teams, students were set up at home. No one is pretending it was perfect, but in many ways it felt like normal school, just done in a different way. So from me, an enormous and heartfelt congratulations to all of you who have navigated these weeks when you couldn't be with us. Sharing devices with siblings and parents, keeping on top of your team's assignments, and throwing yourself into your online lessons. Your response to what we were doing made us feel immensely proud of you. Well done. Then we came back to school, for real. You became experts in shoving swabs up your noses, under supervision of course. Then you became experts in doing it yourself at home. If a measure of someone's value is their versatility and adaptability, then you have hit the heights. Thank you all for your positive attitude through this. 
yet again, we're so proud of you. Thank you too for the vast majority of you who have returned to school living our values and wearing your uniforms smartly, correctly and with pride. Remembering that it is through the uniform that you communicate to other students your humility. You are all in this learning journey together and no person's right to learn is greater or lesser than anyone else's. On this though, and I'm aware this is a celebration assembly, but I think it would be remiss of me if I didn't mention it, some of you have not got your behaviour or your uniform right in these past couple of weeks. You've got Easter to sort it out. When you walk through that gate on the 19th of April, make sure you look and behave impeccably. Amidst everything that's happened, we haven't lost sight of the wider co-curricular life of the school leader. And I'm delighted to report the success of Emily Wolfenden and Rachel Duran, who achieved a gold and silver award respectively in the 2021 Chemistry Olympiad. An amazing feat. Congratulations. And now to our music report. The music department would like to congratulate all of you for maintaining the motivation through lockdowns to practice your singing and your instruments. They recognise how hard this is to do without the added focus of all our ensembles, choirs and concerts. All of our instrumental teaching team have commented on just how fantastic your commitment and attendance has been. However, we have enjoyed three Beyond Limits Zoom concerts, which give students the opportunity to perform in the very informal setting of their own houses and to invite families and friends to be their audiences. We have celebrated pianists, flautists and drum kit players, with each concert closing with words of encouragement from our music ambassadors, Charlie and Esther. Our fifth... Our fifth and final lockdown recording was created by our senior girls choir, Scola Cantorum. Rehearsals were perhaps the most challenging we have ever experienced, as we could not have microphones on, therefore every girl had to effectively rehearse on their own. All parts were recorded individually, and the whole mix was then put together. The backing track created, and the video filmed on a very cold and windy day in the courtyard. We are very proud of all who have taken part in any of our lockdown recordings, and really helped to keep the music alive. We cannot wait to return to live performing after Easter, so keep practising. We're now going to hear Scola Cantorum performing Days of Beauty, the setting of a poem by Emily Bronte.
Our Work Cup competition has continued as in any other year. Judged on the number of achievement points secured by each house, it decides the winners of the prestigious House Cup. Here are the final standings. In sixth place, with 3,144 achievement points, is Hanover. In fifth place, with 3,909 achievement points, is Windsor. In fourth place, the house who was lying second at Christmas, we have, with 4,263 achievement points, Lancaster. Now the top three. In third place, with 4,631 achievement points, we have Stuart. In second place, with 4,729 achievement points, an impressive total, but a little way behind the winners, with 6,381 achievement points. We have in second place, Tudor, and in first place, York. Congratulations all. We would also like to recognise the achievements of five students within the Work Cup competition for their individual contributions to their houses in the last term. In Year 7, with 82 achievement points, huge congratulations to Layla Davies. In Year 8, with a whopping 125 achievement points, the highest in the school in the last term, a big round of applause for Avli Gillett. In Year 9, with 115 achievement points, well done to Emma Shepherd. Now, as we move up the school, those achievement points seem to be harder to come by. But in Year 10, with a still mightily impressive 89 achievement points, a huge congratulations to Callum Taplin. Now, Year 11 was where it was tightest. I'm very sorry, Joe Williams, you were just picked at the post by our joint leaders in Year 11 with 37 achievement points. A big well done to Karis Lodge and Lily Borthwick. I'm sure that your tutors and house team will be speaking to you personally about this great achievement. I'm now delighted to hand over to our head girl, Luana, and head boy, James, for their remarks. I hope you have a wonderful Easter holiday. Our Work Cup competition has continued as in any other year. Judged on the number of achievement points secured by each house, it decides the winners of the prestigious House Cup. Here are the final standings. In sixth place, with 3,144 achievement points, is Hanover. In fifth place, with 3,909 achievement points, is Windsor. In fourth place, the house who was lying second at Christmas, we have, with 4,263 achievement points, Lancaster. Now the top three. In third place, with 4,631 achievement points, we have Stuart. In second place, with 4,729 achievement points, an impressive total, but a little way behind the winners with 6,381 achievement points. We have in second place, Tudor, and in first place, York. Congratulations all. We would also like to recognise the achievements of five students within the Work Cup competition for their individual contributions to their houses in the last term. In Year 7, with 82 achievement points, huge congratulations to Layla Davies. In Year 8, with a whopping 125 achievement points, the highest in the school in the last term, a big round of applause for Avli Gillett. In Year 9, with 115 achievement points, well done to Emma Shepherd. Now, as we move up the school, those achievement points seem to be harder to come by. But in Year 10, with a still mightily impressive 89 achievement points, a huge congratulations to Callum Taplin. Now, Year 11 was where it was tightest. 
I'm very sorry, Joe Williams, you were just picked at the post by our joint leaders in year 11 with 37 achievement points. A big well done to Karis Lodge and Lily Borthwick. I'm sure that your tutors and house team will be speaking to you personally about this great achievement. I'm now delighted to hand over to our head girl, Luana, and head boy, James, for their remarks. I hope you have a wonderful Easter holiday. Thank you, virtual Mr Houghton. Well, we've made it to the end of another fairly unusual term. It's great that we're almost all back in school for the end of term, although it's a shame that we don't get to practice our actual public speaking skills in a dismissal assembly. This time last July, we were here saying that both teachers and students have had to adapt to a new way of working. And now that we've quite successfully adapted, it's time to return back to the traditional ways of learning, leaving Microsoft Teams as only a small feature as opposed to the main event. There are still a number of well-loved pictures of the calendar that are notably absent and question marks looming over a number of events. Nobody can say for sure when or how these questions will be answered. We just have to wait and see, getting really involved with any and all of the opportunities that will present themselves. While we're all back at school, there are also familiar members of staff who have not returned and have left us over the course of the term. And so we say goodbye to Adam Day and Rebecca Harrington. We hope that by the time the summer term arrives, we're able to, as a school, to carry out some form of house events, whether in person or online, to bring back the side of county we all love and miss. With this in mind, the senior team and house captains will be staying in our roles for a little bit longer than usual before we hand over to the year 12s later in the summer term. Next time, we'll also be welcoming a new teacher of business studies and economics, Gertrude Davison. This year undoubtedly has taught myself and James an awful lot, with us moving to universities we haven't even had a chance to visit in person. Having almost finished my seven year journey at County, my advice would be to take advantage of all the amazing opportunities it provides. I'm sure I can speak on behalf of many of you that this pandemic has made us all realise what a privilege it is to be among friends and teachers inside such an amazing school. Finally, we hope you have a safe and restful Easter holidays and we'll see you perhaps more face-to-face -face next term. Thank you for that, Luana and James. So it's at this time of the year when Christians celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It encourages to think of a time of hope, regardless of any faith that we may hold ourselves. Hope for ourselves, hope for our friends, hope for our family and hope for our future. This is also of course a time of the year for thanks. Thanks for family and friends, for our parents, our carers, for our governors, for the Athena Schools Trust and of course our amazing team of staff that work so closely with all of us and all of you every day particularly this term, the staff involved in the lateral flow testing that has kept us all so safe. It's also a time where I must thank all of you, our thriving and resilient students. Well done for coming back fighting, for telling us when you are struggling and for allowing us to help. Well done for working so hard each of you in a different way, we are so proud of you all. So, Easter starts at around about noon today and we will see you again for period three on Monday the 19th of April. Over the break, please do not forget to take a lateral flow test for a friend every Sunday and every Wednesday, especially on the 18th of April, the day before we return to school. When you return, be ready to work hard, be properly equipped, and please wear your uniform correctly, smartly, and with pride. I'm going to leave you today with an extract from a poem. The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman was read at the inauguration this year of President Biden. And this is the part that I would really like you all to hear. We will rebuild, reconcile and recover in every known nook of our nation, in every corner called our country. Our people diverse and beautiful will emerge battered and beautiful. When the day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. 
the new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Let me focus on one line from that extract. When the day comes, we step out of the shade of flame and unafraid. Now there is still battle to be done with the pandemic, but our attitude and our positivity, our care and compassion for each other at Guildford County School means that we are in a position to begin to think about coming out of that shade and that we are able to be a flame and to be unafraid. Have a very happy, healthy and safe Easter. And I very much look forward to seeing each and every one of you for the summer term. Thank you.